Hey guys, welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge, and we've got the Hearns Time today. Yeah, I'll show you close-up pictures once we get to the tabletop. Comes in several colors, I think three, maybe four different colors. I've got natural G10 here. 14C 28 and stainless steel blade right there. Liner lock, uh, pocket clip. It's a right side only pocket clip. I thought it could be both ways, but no, it's a right side only pocket clip. It looks weird. Like, I mean, it's a funky looking thing. Big forward choil, very easy to get a grip up there that way. And the blade shape, quite useful. How much does this thing cost? Well, I'll tell you right now instead of later on. It's like $44.99 at White Mountain Knives. Take off your 10% with coupon code CCE and you're gonna get it for $40.49 American. I think that's a good price for what you get. At least, I'm liking it. And you can use the hole, you don't have to flick it open that way. Thank you if you are one of my financial supporters for the channel. I appreciate your help an awful lot. If you want to support the channel, go to patreon.com slash CCE and you can support me that way. Or below the video, there is a button. It's the word join. It's not really a button, it's just the word join. And you can click on that and support the channel that way. Supporters get prizes. Every single month, one supporter wins a knife of their choice that I reviewed in the previous month. That could be you. Without any further ado, let's get to the tabletop and check out the Harns Time. All right, there it is. Uh, by the way, some of you are asking how I'm doing uh, with my health issues. Yeah, it just takes time <laughs> to get back to my normal. Thankfully, my normal has, you know, slowly, you know, if you've got a line chart, it's slowly getting better over, you know, if you measure it by years, I am getting better, especially my knee. My knee is better now. It's been, you know, in, in another week, one more week, it'll be exactly a year since I had my knee replacement surgery, the full knee replacement surgery. I just really love it. It's not great by any stretch of the imagination because of how bad it was for so very, very long, but it's doing better. And my other health issues like my you know, colitis and other stuff, yeah, it's slowly getting better. But, uh, you know, we'll see. I do have, you know, times when it's just not good. But today, on the 23rd of November, I'm doing pretty good. Here's a size comparison with the Ontario Route 1. Let's line up those pivot pins. It's similar sized. It's a little bit smaller, but it's similar sized. And it's similar in a few ways. You know, we've got that forward half and half kind of choil kind of thing going on there. And we've got very similar amounts of cutting edge, but this time the rat wins. It's got more cutting edge than the time has. So what do we have in this knife? Uh, we've got a dip here where your thumb goes. So basically it's a thumb riser right there for your thumb, some jimping on it. I wouldn't mind if that jimping went further, but I say that about most knives, but the jimping's pretty good. It's barely aggressive enough. I wouldn't mind if it was a little bit more aggressive, but it is aggressive enough, especially if you do the forward, you know, choil, then, you know, right here on my thumb, you know, it gets into that grip and that's, that's okay. But like I said, I do wish it was a little bit more jimping up there. We've got a swedge that starts immediately back here and comes all the way to the tip. It is fairly thick at that tip, so it's pretty strong right there. Most of the blade isn't super thick, but it's, you know, the thickest right there at the tip. You know, that's the strongest point on the edge. And then we've got a Scandi, a Scandi grind. <laughs> we've got a Sabre grind, which is a flat grind that doesn't come to the spine. That's the general accepted definition of the term. That's the funny thing about terminology. It's always changing. You know, just like the word literally now doesn't mean literally at all. And it can mean specifically, exactly, you know, scientifically, literally. It can mean both things, you know, because language is made for humans. If humans are made to serve language, language becomes this dictatorship that we fight about. Language is made for us to use. So as long as people understand what we're trying to say, language is working. We've got a slightly polished finish. It's a satin grind with a slight polish on it. And uh, belly here, a little bit of a straight edge. Like I said, this big forward choil. Badging on here, yeah, there's the, uh, there's the word time right there. It's on the main bevel. I don't like that. 
I wish it was on the flats, but at least on the flats right here, it says Sandvik 14C28N in an odd font, but it's not terrible. Sometimes Harns uses really weird fonts, uh, but this one's okay. And then on this side, we've got Harns on the bevel. You know, the billboarding's a little bit too much. I really wish they would have made that smaller and put it somewhere else, especially since we've already got the H for Harns right here. That's enough, in my opinion. Just that H, leave this blank, and I'd be fine with that. This word time, you know, shrink the Sandvik 12C28N and put the time right beside it in, in that spot. You know, that's what I would prefer. But, hey, you review what you've got and not what you want to get. So that's what we've got. The handle here, oh, sorry, the blade, we've also got a big hole in there. So like I said, you can flick it open from inside that hole. That works just fine because uh, the detent is quite nice. So it works well, right or left-handed, not a problem. So I like that. The lock is easy enough to disengage, right or left-handed. And uh, sometimes when I'm looking at my camera instead of at what I'm doing, I slip my finger over, but it really is a pretty good flipper tab. It's not quite straight up and down, but it's a nice flipper tab with a little bit of jimping on it that really works quite well. And then the rest of this pivot area lock up. It's very much like I like a brand new knife to be, fully engaged. Lock release, we've got a chamfer on the side of that lock bar, which I like, and some jimping across the top, just to get you enough grip to push that across. That's a very good thing. And uh, no blade play, side to side, up and down. Now this pivot pin has been coming just slightly loose on occasion, and so you know, I do have to, that's a T6 there. Snug it up just a little bit. And, you know, the action is still wonderful. So you might want to put some thread mate in there. I like Vibratite VC3 thread mate. That's my favorite go-to uh, stuff. And I mentioned it, I think, in a recent video. I like that a whole lot better than Loctite. And, uh, yeah, there you go. Quite nice, smooth action, uh, good detent. Let's see that. There you go. So you can tell if it just pops in like that, that it's a good, generally you can tell that that's a good detent, so that's nice. The rest of this handle, you know, I mentioned this section here before, and then we've got it coming straight back. We've got a back spacer that's exposed a little bit with jimping across the back of it. It's comfortable in a reverse grip, you know, with this angled cut right at the end here. That works just fine. Sometimes my middle finger gets annoyed with that pocket clip sticking up the way it sticks up right there. I usually don't like pocket clips sticking up. And in this case, yeah, that sometimes is a little annoying. It's not a big deal, but yeah, I'd much prefer if it went flat on the top. The clip doesn't go very deep. You can see this, uh, button sort of screw cover, you know, it sticks out. Well, it sticks out on this side as well behind the pocket clip, meaning there's very little space this way between the pocket clip and that screw. But let's show it going into a pocket anyway. All right, here we go. Put that there. It wants to climb over right away and it goes in and then it hangs up right there a little bit. And these are not especially thick. So you got to be prepared for that. And that's because you've got very little space and then you've got uh, those button screws, but those button screws do not stick up higher than the surface of, you know, that sort of big screw that's in there. They just didn't put enough room in there. I don't know what they were thinking, but of course it's secure in the pocket. You don't have an awful lot of the knife sticking out, but getting it to go to full depth is not very easy to do. We've got a lanyard hole right at the very back. I like the placement of that lanyard hole. We've got button screws, T6 right here. I don't like button screws, especially T6 button screws, but one thing they didn't do was sink them in nice and deep. If you're gonna do a button screw, you know, have it sit just a little bit proud so that that very edge right around the screw, that there's not a big trench there for, you know, lint and crud and stuff to, you know, get in there. But I would much prefer that these screws be T8s because these are both T6s and these are all T6s over here too. We just have T8 on 
the main pivot screw. The handle scales, they've got a circle kind of pattern milled into them right here. And then we've just got, you know, sort of curves here. And then by the end, they're almost straight. And the texture is helpful. You get a little bit extra grip from that texture. It's not annoying. It's not particularly ugly. And here's the other colors that you can get. I might have showed them in the intro as well. I didn't show you the blade alignment yet. There it is, pretty much right down the middle. I kind of like that. And the balance point is kind of hard to make it balance. kind of wants to roll in right there. So right there, that's the balance point. I do wish the balance point was a little bit more forward, but I wish that on almost every single knife. So that's just the way it is. How well does it cut? Well, this knife's cutting quite well. The sharpness, it's very sharp from the factory, sharper than average. It's not too thick behind the grind. And the grind angles are okay. They're a little bit odd. And I'll tell you all about those in a minute. But it actually cuts quite well. And it's strong for piercing, although it's not really a piercing kind of tip. But you can pierce into some things and slicing and cutting, you get good control. And uh, it's fairly decent. Let's take this thing apart and show you how it's constructed. Here it's just part way apart. I had to loosen both of the screws on the pocket clip and that screw back there and of course the pivot screw. And I still have two body screws here to go. There you see the captured stop pin, but I can't take it all the way apart yet until I release these. Sorry, my hands are in the way, but that's just the way it's gotta be to get this off. And let's... Take that off right there. And there you go. That's the construction. We've got ceramic ball bearings in here in phosphor bonds cages. Uh, we've got standoffs on these screws. So you could, let me see if I can get this off. That's going to be hard to get off. But you could take off the backspacer. If you don't like backspacers, take it off. You are just going to have round posts, not hourglass shaped posts, but you do not have to use the backspacer. So that's your option. It's just on there really tight right now. And I don't want to fight with it too much. Uh, now you can see lots of dirt and schmutz in here. You see that? That's because I actually use these knives. I do a thorough testing with them. I don't just take them out of the box and do a review after I've done some measurements. I test all the knives that I review, even though I don't show you all the cutting. And that's because demonstrating cutting is not really helpful. It looks cool. It gets views. It's really clickbait, in my opinion. Clickbait's not necessarily a bad thing, you know, because it's just stuff that tries to get people to watch you, as long as it gives you something good. As long as, you know, the bait has some substance to it. But the thing is, you can take a knife and you can cut stuff and, you know, you can make it look like it's easy to cut stuff and you can make it look like it's terribly hard to cut stuff. And most of that is up to the individual technique. And only part of it has to do with how good the edge is on a knife and the bevel and all that stuff. So I don't show cutting and I've got a whole video about that if you're curious. We've got a big pivot collar right there. And then there's the pivot screw that goes on top of it. D-shaped pivot pin right there so it doesn't spin. Time for me to clean it all up and put it back together. The weight to this knife. This thing's 131 grams. 4.62 ounces. Yeah, that's fair. Not a great weight, but yeah, it's fair. Sharpness from the factory measured three times. The average score 95 best. That's quite a bit better than average. The cutting edge length, 77.1 millimeters, 3.03 inches. Blade length tipped to the closest spot on the handle scales, 79.9 millimeters, 3.15 inches. How thick is the blade here at the pivot? 3.18 millimeters, 0.125 inches, exactly an eighth of an inch thick. Blade depth, the widest point, 27.7 millimeters, 1.09 inches. How thick is it behind the grind? Again, measured in three places. The average is 0.46 millimeters, 18 thousandths of an inch. I like that. I don't want it to get thicker than 20 thousandths of an inch. So it's pretty good. The grind angles. Well, we've got 
the average scores per side. This side's got an average score of 17.8 degrees. This side's got an average score of 14.7 degrees. That's That helps with making it cut really well. And 14C28N can handle being 15 degrees per side as long as you're not going to be doing some really hard purpose cutting. I'd put it at about 18 degrees per side. Uh, this side started at 17.2, ended at 18.4. That's 0.8 degrees change. This side started at 14.6, ended at 14.8. That's 0.2 degrees change. So the sharpener is being fairly consistent as they're drawing the knife across the sharpening wheel or stone or, you know, rotating, you know, grinding thing of some kind. That's basically what they use, some kind of rotating grinding, either a belt or a wheel. The rest of the measurements, the handle length, 122.4 millimeters, 4.82 inches. The grip area over here, that's about nine centimeters or about three and a half inches. If you add the forward choil, it's about 11 and a half centimeters or four and a half inches. The thickness of the handle on the G10 surface, it's got lots of things sticking out further, but on the G10, 14.4 millimeters, 0.566 of an inch. The handle depth within the grip, what's the widest point this way? And that's right here, 25.5 millimeters, 1.004 of an inch. When the knife is closed, the widest point is here. And well, it's actually, I do it straight across, so it's right about here between my fingers. 36.8 millimeters, 1.45 inches. And the total length, 202 millimeters, 7.95 inches. So basically, an eight inch knife, around three inches here, and around five inches here. Are the proportions okay? Well, that's up to you if you like that or not. What's my opinion? What do I think of it? Well, remember the price. I told you at the beginning, $44.99. You take off 10%, makes it $40.49. That's about $56 Canadian. That's quite nice. I do not know of a store in Canada that has these knives, but you know, White Mountain Knives has them. And uh, you can get, you know, your 10% off with coupon code CCE whenever you shop at White Mountain Knives. And that's probably the best price I could find. If I can find better prices than, you know, your savings at White Mountain Knives, I will list those down below. You know, I don't, you know, you know worship at the altar of, you know, me getting a discount and then just sending you to higher price places. If there's a better place to get the item than the place I got it from, I will tell you. So check down below in the video description. I'll also leave links in the comment section to make it easy for you to get this knife if you want it. If you don't want this knife, well then, hey, don't get it. That's how life works, right? I'm not trying to push this knife on you. I'm not a seller. I'm not an advertiser. I'm a reviewer. So I just want to give you my opinions. I don't like telling you if you should buy a thing or not. Would I buy this? Probably. It's pretty cool. I like funky things. This thing's different. It's unique. And uh, yeah, it's not terribly expensive. Is it perfect? You know, certainly not. You know, especially this pocket clip. It's got problems on this end and it's got problems on this end. Now this end, it's not that important. Well, it could annoy you. It might be more important to you. And on this end, yeah, it's a bit annoying. But again, maybe you can live with it. Now, I am going to try putting that pocket clip on without that button. It's going to be ugly, but uh, here's what that looks like. I took it out. It works a little bit better. It'll sink into the pocket fully. You just have to decide if it's ugly or not to take that out. I like that you've got a hole that you can deploy the blade from, you know, that way, or you can use the flipper tab. So that's quite good. You know, the flipper tab turns into a good guard in case you're using it to puncture. I like the forward choil. You know, it's fairly comfortable in hand. It's a decent steel. It's a nice knife. Are you going to buy one? Let me know in the comments below what you think. Thanks again to my supporters. You guys are stunning. And again, here's the links to make it easy for you to support the channel if you want to support my channel every month. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.